Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we worship you and honor you. Thank you, Lord, that you are so good. And Jesus is right here with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Holy Communion is an important time because when we eat the bread and drink the juice, we remember all that Jesus has done for us at the cross. And Jesus is right here ministering to us and He's giving us the elements, the bread and the wine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's partake of the communion together. We can lift up the bread and say after me, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. I receive right now, I receive right now your life, your life health, health, and strength into my body. My youth is renewed like the eagles. My body is restored. My body is restored. As you are, as you are, so am I in this world. So am I in this world. Let's partake. The body of Jesus is the best food. And it's the best for us. Hallelujah. It's better than any medicine, any antibiotic, any drug, any anything you can get in this world. The body of Jesus is the best. Amen. Hold up the cup and say after me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Because of your blood, because of your blood I am forgiven, I'm forgiven righteous, righteous, and blessed. I am blessed with the blessings of Abraham. I'm blessed with my youth is renewed like Abraham's. I am protected from every danger and disease. Let's drink. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome. You guys don't, don't feel so energetic. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's dive right into God's Word. Okay, I want to start off by letting us do some declarations. Because like we sang in that song, God reigns and He's still God. But how does the Bible say God reigns? The Bible say God reigns in our lives through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. But it says He reigns for us receiving and then that receiving there is in the present active tense. What does present mean? Now. What does active mean? It's something you do. So you need to presently, actively be receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. How do you do that? The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. Faith is saying, the Bible says I believe, therefore I speak. So you must declare who you are in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So let's declare who we are. If you've given your heart to Jesus, you've invited Jesus into your heart, this is who you are. So you can boldly declare it. Say it with me. Or say it after me. Say, I'm always right with God. Say it. I'm always right with God. I do what is right. I have the whole armor of God. I am saved. I am filled with the Spirit of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now say, Jesus' blood made me free. Jesus' blood made me righteous. Jesus' sacrifice made me acceptable. And I am accepted in the beloved. I am accepted by God. I am accepted by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Say, I am now righteous by the blood of Jesus. His mind, His thoughts, His objectives, and His plans are mine. I have laid down my life and taken up His. I take up my cross every day. Every day I take up my cross. It is God's pleasure to give me the kingdom. And I receive that kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I receive it. I receive the righteousness of God. 
I am in right standing with God and accepted by God. Amen. So, I can and will come boldly to the throne of grace for help in time of need. I am never turned away. I am always accepted. I live in the kingdom. I live in faith. I live in righteousness. I am right with God. I am right with God in my thoughts. I am right with God in my actions. I am right with God in my deeds. I am right with God in my works. I am right with God in my speech. I am right with God in every way. My thoughts are pure. My heart is pure. They are good. And I renew my mind to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't that just fill you with faith? Hallelujah. Now, let's take a look at a portion of Scripture. So we, a main portion of Scripture is from Romans 5 today. And we're going to start reading from Romans 5 verse 6. And I want us to take a look at the map much more. So what Paul does is, he takes a truth and then he says, but now. But he uses the word much more. So if this is true, then much more. This is the truth. Isn't that so? We're going to take a look at that. So it starts off in verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Notice who Christ died for the ungodly. So if you are not ungodly, then Christ didn't die for you. Christ died only for the ungodly. Hallelujah. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then Paul says, much more. So if Jesus died while we were still sinners, much more, then having been declared righteous now, in His blood, we shall be saved through Him from the wrath. So notice, Paul, Paul says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us, demonstrating God's love. How much more does Jesus love us that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ? So because you have a righteousness of God in Christ, much more God loves you. Much more He'll take you and deliver you from wrath. Hallelujah. And the wrath is specifically also referring to the tribulation period. Verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God from the death of His Son, much more, say much more. Much more. Having been reconciled, we shall be saved in His life. So while we were enemies, Jesus reconciled us to God. Much more now that we are His friends, much more now that we are reconciled to, much more that we are in Christ, we are saved by Jesus' life. We live because of Christ. Hallelujah. Then it says, verse, so let's skip to verse 17. So Adam sinned. And Adam sinned caused what? Death to enter the world. So now he compares it and he says, For if by the one man's offense, Adam's offense, Death reigned through the one. Say reigned. Reign. So death reigns. How do we know that? Because people die. But now it says much more. Say much more. Much more. Much more those who receive. And like we said, this receiving is present active. So now you must be receiving. How do you receive it? By believing it and claiming it and saying it. Hallelujah. But by receiving abundance of grace. Say abundance. abundance. So people say this person talks too much about grace. They can't be too much. Why? Because it's the abundance of grace. Not just a little bit of grace. It's an abundance of grace. So you can't talk too much about the grace of God. Every sermon is about the grace of God. The abundance of grace and of the free gift. So gift is already free. But the Bible says the free gift. I want you to make sure you understand it's free. It's the free gift 
of righteousness. So when you hear the word righteousness and you think something I must do, you don't understand righteousness. Righteousness is a gift and it's free. And what does it make you? What does it mean to be righteous? It means you are right with God. Say, I am right with God. I am right. I am always right with God. I am always right. Say forever. Forever. Always. Always. You are forever and always right with God. When you've invited Jesus into your heart, you are forever and always right with God. And this righteousness and this being right with God is a free gift. Now when you receive the abundance of grace and this free gift, what happens? You reign in life. Say reign. Reign. What What does it mean if you reign? It means you are above the problems. You are above the addictions. You are above the troubles. You are above the sicknesses. You are above the lack. You are above everything. Why? Because you are reigning. Another translation says reign as a king. Reign as kings in life. And how do we reign? Through the one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because we are in Christ. So this reigning and this receiving takes place through us renewing the mind. Because we are already righteous completely in our spirits. But we are not just a spirit, we are a soul and a body. Yes? So you are three parts. You are spirit, soul and a body. Your soul and body are just as important as your spirit. But how do you get your spirit and body transformed to be like your spirit? By renewing the mind. So let's take a look at Romans 12 verse 1. It says, I call upon you therefore brethren, through the compassions of God, to present your bodies a sacrifice. Say sacrifice. Sacrifice. Now what kind of sacrifice must our bodies be? Firstly, a living sacrifice to God. Then it says a sanctified sacrifice to God. And then an acceptable sacrifice to God. So free, living, sanctified, acceptable sacrifice to God. And then Paul says this is the smart thing to do. Which is your intelligent service. It's the smart thing to do. Say, I'm smart. I'm smart. smart. Hallelujah. I'm not dumb. I'm not stupid. I'm smart. Now, how do you present your body as a living sacrifice? The Bible says, And not be not conformed to this age, but be transformed. Say transformed. Transformed. By the renewing of your mind. So you transform by renewing your mind. For you're proving what is the will of God. So as you renew your mind, as your mind is transformed, your body will be transformed. And then what? You will know the will of God. You will prove the will of God. But what's amazing is when the Bible says prove the will of God, it says you're proving it in three parts. You will prove it in the first, the good will of God. Then it's the acceptable will of God. Then it's the perfect will of God. So what's the good good will will of God? God says every good thing comes from the Father. So what's a good will? God wants everyone yield. But sometimes, what if some they know the will of God? God wants me yield, so they'll go see a doctor. Or they'll get someone to pray for them. That's a good will of God. What's the acceptable will? It could be that you partake of a communion and you pray in tongues. You get yield like that. And the perfect will of God, you don't get sick. Or if you get sick, you instantly stand against it and you're instantly better. That's a perfect will of God. So you have a good will. Maybe you go see the doctor. The doctor helps you. Or you, you, someone prays for you. The acceptable will is you pray in tongues or you partake of the communion. The perfect will is you don't get sick. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this word transformed. It's not the transform that most people think. When most people think I need to renew my mind is, okay, I read the Bible and then I get transformed. But then if something bad happens or I do something stupid, I go back to the way I was. I revert. I fall back. I backslide. This word here, transform, is metamorphu. Metamorphu. It's the word where we get metamorphosis from. 
Who, who of you know what metamorphosis is? Mika, what is metamorphosis? Let's see what it is. Have you ever heard of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly? Hmm? Okay, but before we get to that, let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17. And the Bible says that the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when you read your Bible, when you're renewing your mind, you're looking for the Spirit of the Lord in the Word. You need to read the Word where the Spirit of the Lord is giving you freedom. And then verse 18 says, We all, with unveiled face, the glory of the Lord, beholding in a mirror. What's the mirror? The Bible is the mirror. So we're looking at Jesus in the Bible. Eh? We're looking at Jesus in the Bible. Or when someone preaches, you're looking at Jesus. Because you're hearing about Jesus. You're beholding Jesus. And then as you behold Jesus, what happens? To the same image are being transformed. Here's that word again. Transformed. Metamorphu. Metamorphosis. From glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So as you listen to sermons, as you read your word, you see Jesus and you are transformed into Jesus' image. You go through a metamorphosis. Now this metamorphosis, most people when they say, oh that guy backslide. Or you, you do something wrong, you watch too much stories or whatever, you do something that's got nothing to do with the Bible, you feel like you've backslid, you feel like you've gone back. But metamorphosis is not something that can change back. How, how many of you have watched the movie Transformers before? Or the movie's Transformers? Get it? Okay, got it. Transformers. <laughs> have none of you watched Transformers before? No. Thank God. Thank God. Yaku, have you watched Transformers at least? Okay. So Transformers is about robots turning into cars and then turning back again into robots. Okay, let's watch a quick video of that because it's cool. <laughs> So praise the Lord. Say transform. transform. What does transform mean? To change. Okay, transform means to change. Now most people when they think about, you can ask, most people when they think about transform, they think like the transformers. They change into a car and then they change back into a robot. They think that's how transformation works. But that's not true transformation, even though the movie is called Transformers. That's not transformation. 
True transformation is irreversible and it's permanent. That's true transformation. Like we saw with the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. The butterfly, even though it might have times when it doesn't feel like a butterfly or doesn't want to act like a butterfly, if a butterfly wakes up one morning and says, Ah, oh, I don't want to be a butterfly anymore. I want to be a caterpillar. Can the butterfly turn back into a caterpillar? No, it doesn't have the power to. Because once metamorphosis has taken place, the butterfly is now a butterfly forever. The caterpillar has turned into a butterfly. The butterfly is now a butterfly forever and for always. Say forever and for always. Forever and for always. True transformation is permanent. There's no switching back. Are you guys following? The butterfly is now a different creature. It acts different and it does different things. It looks completely different than a cater caterpillar. And the butterfly doesn't have the power to change back. Now what happens if the butterfly is flying and it lands in some mud? And now the mud's all over its wings and it cannot fly. And now it has to crawl along in the mud like any other insect. Does that mean the butterfly is no longer a butterfly? Does it turn back into a caterpillar? No, it turns back into a caterpillar. No, it's now a muddy butterfly, but it's still a butterfly. You guys following? Yes. Exactly the same way. Once you invite Jesus into your heart, you go from being a sinner, you are transformed by the blood of Jesus into the righteousness of God in Christ. Now this change is permanent and cannot be reversed. Say once a butterfly, always a butterfly. Once a butterfly. Always a butterfly. So the same way, once you the righteousness of God in Christ, you are always the righteousness of God in Christ. Forever and for always. Because the blood of Jesus Christ transforms you instantly, it takes away all your sins, it cleanses you and makes you and transforms you into the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what will some people say? What happens when I sin? Does that mean I'm no longer the righteousness of God in Christ? What's the answer? Of course not. Once the righteousness of God in Christ, always the righteousness of God in Christ. The same way when a butterfly falls into some mud, what needs to happen? Someone can help it or it just needs to crawl out of the mud. The butterfly needs to renew its mind and say, Hey, I'm not just a normal insect, I am a butterfly. So I can spread my wings and go to the flowers. So the same way a righteous person, when they fall into sin or do something that's sinful, what do they need to do? Renew their mind and say, hey, this is not who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And then what happens? They have the power to rise above the sin. Yes. The same way the butterfly can rise above the mud. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. So like we saw the word there in Romans 12 and 2 Corinthians 3 is the word metamorpho, which is where we get the word metamorphosis from. And it's the same word like we know, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. So when you renew your mind, you are saying who you already are in the spirit. That there's been a permanent change that's irreversible. Hallelujah. Because the, like the butterfly doesn't have the power to turn back into a caterpillar. Can it do it? No. It's permanent. The same way, even though a righteous person may sin, sin doesn't have the power to turn you back into a sinner. Once a sinner has become the righteousness of God in Christ. It's permanent. So a caterpillar cannot 
come and touch the butterfly or do something to the butterfly. No. And turn it back into a caterpillar. Once you are a butterfly, you are always a butterfly. So how do you renew your mind? You need to know that you are valuable, who you are in Christ. Let's take gold for example. If I take a gold bar and I take a hammer and I start hitting the gold bar, hitting the gold bar, I bash it up. Does my bashing the gold bar change its value? No, it's still a gold bar with some dents in it. Same way, even as a righteous person and I go through life and I get bashed by lots of different things, by troubles or persecutions or whatever, it doesn't change my value. I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ. Even if I make a mistake and I get a bash, or I do something wrong, I get a bash, or I do something stupid, I get a bash, it doesn't change my value. I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, if I take that gold bar and I put it in some goo or in some filth or in mud or in something dirty, you guys following? See the gold bar in the mud? Oh, it's dirty. I'm going to put on my gloves first to take it off. Look at this gold bar. It's all dirty and the goo is falling off. Is the gold bar still a good gold bar? It doesn't lose its value, even though it's covered in filth. What do you need to do? You need to put it under the water of the Word and you need to clean the gold bar. So that's what we do. We renew our minds through the water of the Word and we get all the filth off. But the filth doesn't change the value of the gold bar. The same way sin cannot change the value of the righteous. And what happens if I take the gold bar and I put it in fire and I melt it? Does it change the value of the gold? No, it's still valuable, whether it's a bar or whether it's mounted. It's still valuable. So the same way, even if you go through life and you feel I've been mounted by trouble, circumstances, situations, you don't lose your value. So say, I am valuable. I am valuable. I'm significant. I'm, significant. I'm accepted. I'm accepted. <laughs> but you're protected also. And to know the value of something, you need to understand that it's valuable. If you don't know it's valuable, you won't understand its value. And what determines the true value of something? How much someone is willing to pay for it? If I go into a shop and something is 200 Rand, I'm going to have to choose whether I value my 200 Rand more than I value the present or the thing. Or what, which one I value more. If I value my money more, I'm going to keep my money. If I value the thing more that I want to buy, I'll give my money for that thing. So then that thing is more valuable than my money. So the same is like the Dead Sea Scrolls. Who of you guys have heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? The first person that found the Dead Sea Scrolls was a shepherd boy. How much do you think he sold the Dead Sea Scrolls for? Less than $30. Because he didn't know how valuable it was. The Dead Sea Scrolls are priceless. It's, you can't value it because it's so, it's so much worth. Why? Because it's one of the oldest manuscripts of the Bible. But he didn't know it's worth. So he sold it for less than what it was worth. So the same way you need to know your value. How valuable are you? The Bible says God gave Jesus for you. He bought you, ransomed you, bought you with Jesus' blood. So Jesus' blood was used to pay for you. So that's how valuable you are. You are so valuable. You are as valuable as Jesus' life. You are as valuable as Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the same way a son cannot go to his dad and say, I'm no longer your son. I'm a servant or I'm... I'm just going to, I'm no longer your son. A son doesn't have the power to no longer be his dad's son. Why? Because he's his son. He cannot change it. You're, you're the dad's son by birth. Once you are born his son, you are his son. So the same way, once we are born again, we are our daddy God's sons and daughters. You cannot change it anymore. You are born again. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. So the son might be naughty and messed up and lose some privileges, but he will always remain the son of his dad. You guys following? Let's take a look at Luke 15 verse 11. What time is it? So I, I don't think we can go through. Okay, so we can't go through the whole story. But the story, I think most of you have heard it. What happens? The son messes up. He doesn't love his dad. He doesn't actually care about his dad. He disrespects his dad. And he goes off and sins and messes up big time. Like if anyone has messed up, this guy has messed up. He went and slept with the prostitutes. He saw, gave all his money away. And he, at the end, he's, he's lost everything. And then he even wants to eat the pig's food. And then he remembers, my dad's servants have got better food than this. They are served. They serve his dad and they've got a good life. So in the end he goes back to his dad, not because he loves his dad, but because he's hungry. And he knows he can have a good life as a servant. What does his dad do? He runs to the son. He hugs the son. He kisses the son even though he's dirty and stinks like a pig. And he kisses him and gives him the robe of righteousness. He gives him the ring of authority. He gives him the sandals of peace of the gospel and destiny. Hallelujah. So, and then what does he say? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But what he doesn't understand is you can't be worthy enough to be someone's son. You can't be worthy enough to be someone's daughter. A dad's daughter. Why? Because you need to be born a son. You need to be born a daughter. So he was born the son. So no matter if he's a bad son or a good son or a son that doesn't care about him, he remains the son of the father. So praise God, our father is good like this father because this father was representing our daddy God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I'm a son of God. Son of God. Or I'm a daughter of God. And can you be worthy? Can you be worthy enough to be a son? Can you be worthy enough to be a daughter? No, you can't. You have to be born a son. You have to be born a daughter. And that's what happened to us when we invited Jesus into our life. We got transformed from being a sinner to being the righteousness of God in Christ. And this transformation is permanent and cannot be reversed forever and always. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you are now the righteousness of God in Christ and you do not have the power to change that because the blood of Jesus has the power to wash away all our sin, transforming even the dirtiest sinner into the righteousness of God in Christ. And the good news is that once the righteousness of God in Christ, always the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at two very important verses. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, 17 and verse 21. You must highlight these verses in your Bible and learn them off by heart. What does it say? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, say in Christ, in Christ, I'm in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. So as you renew your mind, metamorphosis, you are just renewing your mind to who you already are. All things are new in your spirit. You need to renew your mind so that all things are new can manifest in your body and in your soul. Hallelujah. And as you renew it, it will be good, acceptable, then the perfect law of God will manifest. Hallelujah. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So who is this He? God. God made Jesus who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Say it again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. 
So you must say it, believe it, and claim it. Hallelujah. Because when you claim under righteousness of God in Christ, sin no longer has power over you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like what Martin Luther said. Martin Luther said, Jesus, I am your sin. And you are my righteousness. So Jesus took all your sin and you take all his righteousness. Praise the Lord. So like we said, a butterfly never chooses to stay in the mud. Why? Because it's a butterfly. So the same way a righteous person just needs to renew their mind. And then the best thing for a butterfly to do is to say, Hey, I'm a butterfly. I don't belong in the mud. I belong with the flowers. So the same way a righteous person, as you remember who you are in Christ, you will rise above and you will have power over sin. Sin will no longer have power over you. Sin is your servant is down there. So remember who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a son of God. And a son of God, a child of God is more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. God has a Jesus kid. I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid is a champion kid. Hallelujah. Amen. So the next time you mess up, don't say, I'm a loser, or I'll never get overcome this, I'm an addict. You know, like these things say, I'm an addict. It's the worst. A Christian should never say, I'm an addict. Or a Christian should never say, I'm an angry person, or an anxious person, or a person who's always irritable, or I'm a sick person, or, I'm a, or I've got this condition, or this problem. No, stop it. Just say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. Hallelujah. So you have the power to break free from the trap of sin. You have the power to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And when you say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, what are you saying? You are saying, I'm always right with God. I am right with God. I'm all right with God. Because of Jesus, I'm always right with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this means that when you are struggling with something, when you are struggling with sin, struggling with health, struggling with anything, what can you do? You can run to God. Instead of running away from God, you run to God. Hebrews 10 verse 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. So every time when you come to Jesus, it's a living way. It's a new way. Why? Because we are living sacrifices. We are living a new and living way. Every time when you came to God in the law, it would be dead. Death. You would die. Why? Because you're a sinner. But when you come to God in the New Testament, you get new life. And it's a living way. That He consecrated through the veil that is His flesh. So we can always run to God and we can always call out to God for help. To help us with whatever problem we have. Like Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Bible says God is our very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. So there is real power to do what is good and right when we know we are always loved even when we find ourselves doing the wrong thing or messing up so like I said why do we preach so much on the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness because when you receive it you will reign in life let's read that verse again Romans 5 verse 17 much more, say much more again. Much more. Much more those who receive, say receive, abundance of grace and of the free gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. So let's end by focusing on Jesus' love. Because Jesus loved us so much that He took all our sin so that we can receive all His righteousness. He wants us to be right with His Father. He wants us to be always right with Daddy God. And He has transformed us from being sinners to being the righteousness of God in Christ. And now we can always call out to God. We can speak to Him the whole time. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous is powerful and avails much. And the Lord's eyes look to the righteous. The Lord sees the righteous. Though the righteous may fall seven times, you will rise again. Hallelujah. Amen. The righteous house is blessed because the Lord surrounds the righteous with a shield of favor. And the Lord blesses the righteous like, like Psalm 5 says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The good news is that sin no longer has the power to stop you from being more than a champion. And you are more than a champion. Say, I'm more than a champion. More than a I'm more than a conqueror. I'm because more. Romans 6 verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you are the child of God who can always tell the Lord about anything and everything that you are struggling with. Tell the Lord. Tell Him how you are struggling with something. Tell Him about everything. And then say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the child of God. I am the Son of God. I am more than a champion. And then you thank Him for loving you so much. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say this after me. Say, I am always right with God. Say it. I am always right with God. I do what is right. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus' blood made me righteous. I am now righteous by the blood of Jesus. I receive the righteousness of God. I am in right standing with God and accepted by God. I live in righteousness. I am right with God. I am right with God in every way. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Receive the blessing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are righteous in you. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. And thank you, Lord, that you bless us as the righteous. Thank you, Lord, that you bless us and keep us. Thank you that your face shines upon us and you give us your grace. And thank you, Lord, that your countenance, your face is turned toward us and you give us your shalom peace. <laughs> Yael Yahweh Penav Elecha Bichuneka. He saw Yahweh Penav Elecha. We are Sem Lecha Shalom. In Jesus' name. Beshem Yeshua. Amen.